Hey guys, so this week we're going to be talking about Amethyst. And Amethyst is one of the most beautiful crystals in my opinion. And everybody knows Amethyst. Let's be real. This is one of the most popular, most common crystals. You could go anywhere from a mall to a crystal shop to a flea market to a jewelry store everybody's going to have something with amethyst especially if you're in a crystal store a lot of times they have an entire area just dedicated to amethyst i mean it's very common very popular and because of that it's a shame that i don't think it's used as much as it should be because you just kind of look it up oh, yeah, yeah it's quartz oh that's amethyst uh, it, it's just because it's one of those top 10 crystals, probably even the top three from a consumer standpoint. And it's a shame because it's a very, very spiritual crystal to work with. And it has a bunch of cool metaphysical properties, which are very helpful. So let me show you the next one here. This, this one is a very light color and amethyst ranges from a very light purple like this one. It's kind of why I wanted to show that to anywhere from a very dark or deep purple. Now this guy's kind of somewhere in the middle, but you could see that how beautiful is this? Just gorgeous. Look at the colors on that. I mean, you put this up to the light and wow, just awesome. So amethyst is a very spiritual crystal and therefore because of the, the purple and the energies it holds, it is perfect for the third eye chakra and the crown chakra which are the spiritual ones top top of the head is the main one for amethyst and it is gorgeous so let's see here now we have what can amethyst do for you is the main question now there's one thing that it does better than everything else but i'll get to that toward the end of the video um it is very commonly, think of this kind of like nature's Xanax. It's a natural tranquilizer. It's a natural stress reliever. And it's going to balance your mood. It's going to get rid of anxiety. And let's be honest, in this world, in today's world, there's a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. This is a perfect crystal that is often overlooked but just should be used very frequently. So again, natural tranquilizer. Think of it like your natural Xanax from right out of the earth. Um, here's another little specimen. This is a stalactite. It's an amethyst stalactite and they cut and polish it. And this is another representation of how amethyst can, um, you could, the type to purchase or whether you're mining it, finding it, whatever the case may be. But this is a, another representation. It's kind of polished on the top and rough around the sides. And this is another beautiful specimen. Um, but yeah, definitely great for stress relief. And when you're overburdened, which is pretty much everybody, this is a great one to work with. And it is great where with amethyst, you could easily wear it in jewelry. And that makes it very applicable. Like you could put it on a bracelet. You could use it in a, a charm bag. You could put it on your neck, like a necklace pendant. I mean, this could be cut. This could be polished. And I'll show you some of them as well soon. But amethyst, there's uh, just a, so many variations of this. And it's also highly polishable. So you could get it in like towers and different things like that here is an amethyst um, cut geode and they cut the face off and it's like a, a geode like a little cathedral uh, they call these guys but these are some of my favorites because they're just awesome and gorgeous to look at obviously but tosses out a lot of energy and amethyst isn't like gonna pack a super punch and and, and knock you on your feet with the energy, but it's also not going to like, you, you'll feel it. You're definitely going to feel it if you work with it enough, um, meditate with it enough, all that kind of stuff. 
So the other thing is what I was saying, it's a natural tranquilizer. It balances your mood. Anger. Anger is a, a big one for, for this one. And I think that it really helps. Now, I'm Italian. I got the hot-headed, you know, you could easily get the hot-headed argument going and you get all fired up for no reason at all, which I've kind of broken away from over the years. But honestly, this is the perfect one to work with to get rid of that anger, to suppress all that. And it just cal- keeps you calm and collective and releases a lot of that stupid anger and rage. And I mean, everybody kind of knows what I'm talking about, whether it's road rage or whatever the case may be. You get into that uh, temper tantrum state and you act like a complete idiot. This kind of will calm you and say, nah, let's not go there. And here's another one. This is a amethyst flower, they call these. And these are a little on the more expensive side, depending on the size. But another beautiful example of amethyst. And this one is just gorgeous look at all the the cluster and everything with this very light purple and there's some that are so dark like um i think it's from brazil like uruguay paraguay they have certain like real good specimens the best come out of brazil and they can be so deep purple it's just awesome so all right getting on to the most important thing i think amethyst should be used for is to break out of the cycle of dependence. Now, again, in this world, everybody kind of needs something. A lot of people have a crutch, whether it be uh, smoking weed, whether it be drinking, drugs of all types, um, all different types of crutches we have. And honestly, hey, some people... It is what it is. I mean, everybody has something going on. And that's kind of like a, an outlet. But if you want to, you're ready to break out from those dependencies where you don't need all that. Like, you want to be sober. You want to get rid of that uh, feeling where, it, whether sometimes you're just bored and you're just, there's nothing else to do and you're going to drink or you're going to smoke or you're going to do this. And you don't want to do that anymore and you want to break from that cycle, a bad cycle. This is the stone. This is the stone of sobriety. Amethyst's number one, I think, in my opinion, number one definite use would be to break from the dependence in the cycle of uh, alcohol, drugs, anything like that, painkillers. This can help. And... This is going to balance your emotions and just help you to break from that cycle. Uh, Whether you use it in jewelry and wear it, whether you meditate with it, or simply keep it with you next to your bed or uh, keep, keep it close to you. Keep it very close to you. This is something you could, if you're really trying to break from that um, dependency cycle, jewelry is your best bet. Keep it on touching the skin And over time, it will help you if your focus and intentions are on actually to break from that. It will help you. And I think that's the number one thing with amethyst that people overlook with it and don't really realize is that it can definitely help you get out of that, that rut and that, that cycle. And that cycle, it is very hard sometimes to break out of very hard. And this can help you. So, like I said, very spiritual stone, very beautiful stone. This one, also, I think, a stalactite, but it's very darker purple, as you can see here. Very deep purple. And just gorgeous. They have amethyst. You could, you could find it in so many different types and shapes and sizes and everything else. Um, let me show you my last one. Um, I have a ton of amethyst. This is one of them. This is very heavy. Um, This is amethyst, and it's cut and polished. And this thing, as you can see, is massive. One of my favorites in my personal collection in terms of amethyst is this guy. 
and it is a whopper. Look at this thing. But you can see the range from light to dark purple. And you this thing, you take this outside and let the sun hit it. Wow. It is just awesome. It's hard to get the whole thing in the uh, in the picture here. But this is one of my favorite. This is well, probably my favorite. But again, you don't need something like this to work with. You could get a polished little stone from a crystal shop. You can get uh, any of these I'm showing you. Just a small piece is kind of what you uh, what you should get to work with. But this is I just wanted to show you this, guys, because this is awesome. It's one of my favorites. So, all right, that'll do it for Amethyst. I'm trying to keep my videos like around the 10, 10 minute, 12 minute range. I don't want to go too crazy and bore everybody to death. But this is the uh, the discussion about Amethyst. So. Hope you learned something, and I will see you guys next time, which will be very soon. Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about pyrite. And pyrite, I'm sure everybody, most people have probably heard of pyrite. And this is commonly referred to as fool's gold. But honestly, you're a fool if you're not using it. Okay, that was a little lame. But pyrite is very sparkly. <laughs> Look at this. In this is, uh, I mean, it's true though. Look, look at this thing. And imagine this with the sunlight hitting it. It is awesome. And that, that's actually kind of, um, it comes from the word pyrite. The word pyre um, comes from uh, the, a Greek word, which means fire. And I think it's the way the sun hits it on the ground where it kind of looks like fire. If I'm... If I remember correctly, <laughs> hopefully I'm not just making this up, but um, it definitely is from the word um, pyre, which is uh, fire in the Greek language. So, and you can see why, but it is very sparkly. And this is one of those where it's kind of like candy for the eyes. I mean, you can't go wrong with this. Look at it. That's awesome. And without knowing anything about pyrite, without... Knowing any of the metaphysical properties, when you look at pyrite, you see the gold, you see the shiny, shimmering awesomeness of it, and you think money, you think wealth, you think gold, you think it's going to be worth money, it's it, all that. But you know what? That is one of the biggest uses for pyrite, and that is pulling in abundance, which we'll talk about, manifesting wealth and abundance that's that's one of its top two uses the other one is protection so let's talk about the protection part first so protection in terms of pyrite is i'm talking electromagnetic frequencies i'm talking all the crap that the microwave spits out the tv spits out the your phone your computer, your, I mean, there's so many different things anymore. We, we live in an electronic world, which obviously has its benefits. But in terms of all that electromagnetic frequency, just smacking against your, your energy body all the time. This is another good one, which will protect you from all that junk. And it doesn't, that's all the man-made stuff, um, which... It, it helps bounce all that off and keep it away from you. But also, in terms of the stuff people don't even know they're transmitting, like the bad vibes, um, the bad energies, the, you know, the person that's putting out all the, the, the crappy vibes and, and depressive mood state and trying to just, uh, like, drown your aura and 
it, it will just collect on you over time. Even if you're in a good mood, eventually if you're around that too much, it's going to soak up into your energy body and start bringing you down. And this is the perfect one. Um, I've talked about other crystals and minerals that have that are great for protection, and uh, especially against electromagnetic frequencies and bad energies. Black tourmaline is still my number one. I'm, I'm, I'm still leaning toward my number one protector is black tourmaline, but right close to it is pyrite. And pyrite's a very grounding stone. Um, the chakras that this one coincides with is the sacral, uh, in the, like the belly button area. And also your, um, I can never think solar plexus, the one right above that. And both those will definitely open and balance if you work with pyrite enough. Um, let me show you another one here. Now here's a good one. And I'll get into this in a little bit, actually. I'm skipping ahead. I, my mind jumps a million miles, so hopefully this will keep me grounded enough to, to get through this. So, protection. In terms of protection, pyrite definitely protects against all that. And it's like a shield, very similar to black tourmaline. Um, and it's going to just... It doesn't transmute the energies if there's something negative like a smoky quartz per se, or a uh, like different crystals like that, where it turns them into a positive, it's just going to smack them in the teeth and say, get out of here. Like, like a black tourmaline, just a shield, just putting up that big shield and saying, beat it. So great for protection. Now, abundance. This is the part where it's exciting because abundance in, I'm talking wealth. I'm talking, uh, you know, wealth could mean many things. Wealth can mean happiness, uh, not just if you have a lot of money. Um, but I'm talking abundance. I'm talking all that. Um, and money and all, you know, success, prosperity. Um, abundance means you have more of one thing, whether it be money, money or whatnot, where you have so much that it's, you know, you don't worry as much. And that's exactly what I'm talking about with pyrite. Because pyrite is the best, the best for abundance. And just working with this and keeping it in your home is great for abundance. But the thing is, you kind of need to give it a little bit of a, a purpose here. Like... If you're working with it, you kind of want to give it your intentions where, what do you want? Do you want money? Do you want uh, success on your YouTube channel? Do you want success on, um, if you're a baseball player? Uh, whatever the case may be, that could be abundance for you, not just cash. Um, so here's the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, but the secret weapon, so to speak, when you're working with pyrite specifically for abundance, get the kind, as you can see here, that has some quartz mixed with it. That is the perfect type of pyrite. And they have these, there's a lot of specimens I see in crystal shops I think a lot of them come from Bulgaria, but it could come from all over the world. Look for quartz mixed with pyrite. And that is going to be the secret to being able to say, you know what? We're going to activate this crystal. We're going to activate it with the quartz as the activator. Quartz holds memories holds thoughts it holds your intentions and that is the big difference with just a regular piece of pyrite which is still effective this is and the pyrite also comes and it grows in a cube form naturally this is a natural piece of pyrite um it's not cut it's not polished these they grow in cubes um oh boy so you want to look for if you're going to go for the abundance 
get it with the quartz mixed in. It's going to be a big difference because this way it's going to hold your intentions of what you want. Whether you want to be that awesome soccer player and have it pull those vibes in or you want that cash in the bank, whatever the case may be, with the quartz mixed in, it's going to hold that intention. It's going to know what you are looking for. Now, here's a great way to program it, so to speak, with the quartz to say, pull in whatever the, the case may be, the money, the success, the career path, get yourself like a little, I mean, you could do this with anything, but get yourself like a little box or something. And all you need to do is write your intention. This is the way I do it. And I'll have some videos on manifestation and stuff like that at some point, but write down your intention, whether you want to to draw in money, you want to get a, you know, a certain car or whatever, J write it down. When you're writing something, you have to really focus, not just like you're half asleep and you, you type something and you're just, you know, it, it, it means more when you write it because it's coming from your brain right through your hand. And you're going to have to think about exactly what you're doing. And you put your intentions, you put your passion into that. Write it down on a sticky note, a piece of paper, whatever. Toss the pyrite in with this. And I keep it open. I don't like to close off crystals from the sun or anything like that. But now, because you have the quartz mixed in, which is holding your intentions, now you have the, at the pyrite giving it that extra oomph with the quartz. That is the secret with pyrite to pulling in abundance 100%. So I would definitely work with it in that regards. If you're looking to manifest abundance or wealth, it is the secret weapon is quartz mixed in with it. That is the secret. Um, also, let me show you my biggest piece here. Well, actually, let me show you this one first. I, I also do collect myself. Um, in terms of like going out into the field and looking and uh, mining or whatever. Like I'm not mining out there, but I'm just looking for uh, crystals. And this one is actually something I found. And I was really proud of this. And I, the uh, host rock on the pyrite, I'm in Pennsylvania, is very hard. So I had to smash the heck out of this. But it's around. I found this in like a coal area where they... Um, I have tons of coal. Anytime you, you find coal, pyrite's close by. So I just wanted to show you that. Depending on your area, you could even go out and find yourself some pyrite. And this one is one of my favorites in my personal collection. Check this beast out. And look at this. Come on! Woo! Look at that. You're talking wealth. You're talking... And no, I don't have LED lights blinking on this. This is all natural. This is all natural. I mean, this thing, imagine this in the sun. Wow. This is awesome. And it goes all the way around. Even in the back part, this thing is still mind-blowing. And I have this in my house just bringing in that abundance. Whatever the case may be, it is bringing it in. And this one just so happens to also be laced with quartz. And it's perfect for that. But wanted to show you this one because it's, one of my, well, probably my favorite, favorite personal specimen. And it's just beautiful. So that is all about pyrite. There's two uses. Protection, similar to a black tourmaline, where it will get rid of all the bad vibes, keep them away from you. And also abundance and wealth and prosperity. Let it pull it in. But use that secret weapon. Get some pyrite mixed with quartz. All right, guys. I will see you next week. Everybody have an awesome weekend. See you later.
today's video, we are going to talk about Septarian. Septarian, and this is commonly called Dragonstone. Um, one thing I'm going to try to do is shorten my videos a little bit. Um, I think they might be a little bit too long, <laughs> like 20 minutes. So I'm going to try to shorten them up and um, hopefully that'll help with, I don't know, I can't help it. A lot of times I get into this and I just keep talking and talking and talking because I love to talk about crystals. Yeah, so today we're talking about Septarian and Septarian. This one is perfect for grounding. Um, not its best primary use, which I'll get into in a minute, but this is a great stone for grounding. And it definitely gives that deep, deep earth energy off. One of the best for that. And this is great for the root chakra. It also is good for the bottom three chakras, um, up to the soul as high as the solar plexus, but I would say primarily root chakra. And this is going to be bringing those deep, deep earth energies right up through that root chakra to balance and stabilize and really connect you and your body with the earth. And this is one of the best to do that. This is ancient. This, this stone is ancient and with that ancient stone is going to come with all that ancient, awesome energy and tons of ancient energy from this. And this is a cool one though. This is a polished piece and there's a lot of yellows and, and stuff in it. Uh, also, like I said, great for the solar plexus, the bottom three chakras Definitely. If you're going to work with, you know, Reiki, that kind of stuff, this is perfect for those chakras. And the main benefit, and let me show you before I get into more, th this is commonly called Dragonstone. And I could, you know, just by looking at this, you could kind of see why. If you polish it up, which is very common in this format, they make an egg out of it. And with all the crystallation in there, just beautiful. I don't know if I could get in there, but awesome the way this crystallizes. You could actually see all the way through this one. But you could see why they call this Dragonstone. It looks like a dragon egg. And they kind of sell it in that fashion. Um, but they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And I have a bunch here, which I'm going to uh, show you from my collection. But... This is great for past life recall. And in terms of grounding A+, plus, I'll give it an A. The next best thing, past life recall. And it makes it easier to use. Like I said in some of my past videos, some of them you really got to get into a deep meditative state and work with energies to get those uh past life you'll get little scenarios at times in your mind um and it gets a little it could be overcomplicated when you're trying to delve into past life stuff um but this stone really helps make it easier it might not be the best one for past life stuff i still think there's another one better and that'll be in a later video but septarian is one of the best and here's something cool too. You pair this with quartz. I mean, you can pair anything with quartz really. And especially septarian, you pair this with quartz and you're going to get that extra amplification to really help with past life recall. And this one, as you can see, is a polished slab. Just gorgeous. Look at this thing. Absolutely beautiful. And you could see how this one's cut and wow, Septarian is a really pretty looking stone. You have to say, you have to admit that. Um, but past life recall, the best thing to do, put it near you sleeping. You pair it with a little piece of quartz, big piece of quartz, whatever you got. And your intentions are the most important part when you're using quartz. 
So if you're pairing this up and you want to delve into past life memories, this is the stone. This is one of the best. And while you're sleeping, that's the place where you're going to get those little bit of memories. Keep a, a, a journal next to your bed. The best thing is to keep like a little notepad or something. As soon as you wake up, jot this stuff down, type it, whatever the case, uh, put it in a little voice recorder because you might think, oh, I'll remember, it'll be gone. And there's times where you pop up in the middle of the night, but if you're serious about it and you want to remember stuff from your past lives, this is the one. So I would keep a a little journal or something just to keep uh, all that fresh. Because you you will forget, I'm telling you. You think you're going to remember, you will forget. Here's another one that's a polished piece. This one's got a little weight to it. Just gorgeous. This one I think they call a flame because of the way it looks. Just another specimen I want to show you guys. Um, But in terms of metaphysical stuff, Septarian... Perfect for grounding. That's one of the best. And past life recall. And it's a very strong conduit for that deep earth energy. Very deep earth energy that's going to come up straight through your root chakra and work some wonders for you. And here's something. Some people say that this is a spiritual awakening stone. And I absolutely believe it. Um, Just holding it, some people claim to have a spiritual awakening. And kind of think of it like this. Imagine walking into um, the the darkness and then flipping on the light switch. That's kind of a spiritual awakening. Where you have, now, it could be anything that's uh, uncovered to you. Something from a past life, something from this life energies released it could be anything from personal to something that a higher being is trying to communicate with you whatever the case may be but that might be a more personal thing but from a spiritual awakening perspective another excellent stone and it's very commonly talked about in the metaphysical community that this could be a good one for spiritual awakening but The main things, very strong earth energy you're going to get out of this. It's going to be grounding. It's going to be stabilizing. And it's a very powerful teacher once you connect to this thing. Just awesome. And, of course, past life recall. I would put this in my top three with past life recall. Now, let me move this guy. And we're going to, I'm going to show you two of my bigger specimens. This one is monstrous. Look at this guy. This is a beautiful sphere. And I have seen spheres in crystal shops that actually come with the piece here that you could take out and put it back like a geode. Just gorgeous. But look at the crystallization in here. I mean, awesome. This is uh, one of my bigger pieces. This is a heavy one. And then this guy, I'm saving to last. I want to show you, this is a monster egg. Look at this thing. And this has got some weight to it. This is a beast. And look at the crystallization. And this is your classic septarian dragon egg. And I have this front and center on my fireplace. And see this sucker every day. Awesome, awesome specimen. So, like I said, I'm trying to cut these down a little bit. Um... I could talk about crystals and I just keep blabbering on, but I'm trying to make videos a little shorter um, to keep people's interest and not bore you guys to death. So I'm going to end it with here. And um, one thing I before I end it, definitely keep watching because this guy right here is going to be my first crystal giveaway. Uh, Coming up very soon, and I'm going to have this listed probably by the weekend. Uh, I'm going to give it about a week, and it's going to be given away for free, no strings attached. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. I don't care where you live. I will box it, package it, and ship it to you for free. 
No strings attached, nothing. So definitely keep watching because if you want this guy, stay tuned. Everybody have a great weekend and I will talk to you very soon. Today we're going to be talking about Labradorite and look at this thing. Come on. Woo! Look at that. That is just brilliant. Definitely, if you get a nice enough specimen, you are going to have major flash and pizzazz. <laughs> look at this thing. And they are beautiful when they're polished like this. Just the way the light hits it, and this is just me inside. If you get the sun on this thing, wow. I mean, it's just brilliant. But look at the colors. Look at the flash. Awesome. Just a beautiful, beautiful crystal or mineral specimen. <laughs> just beautiful. So let's talk about Labradorite. When you talk about Labradorite, you have to think of one word. One word for me comes into mind, magic. When you think Labradorite, think magic. That's the best way. It is absolutely magical. Absolutely. Now, you want psychic abilities. You want all those cool little tidbits of psychic powers and working with your third eye chakra and your crown chakra, all that higher stuff. This is the perfect one. And it actually... It coincides with the three higher chakras, which is um, your throat, your brow, which is your third eye, and your crown. It's, it's focused on those three, and it's awesome to work with, very easy to work with, and very common where you could find this locally. Um, crystal shops, everybody has Labradorite. And Labradorite is just one of those where, how do you not like it? I mean, seriously. Now, here's another one. Not as flashy, not as much crazy flash as the other one I have, but it's still um, just a cut, polished little piece. Easy to work with. Easy to hold. I mean, they, they this comes in polished spheres. It comes in um, gemstones where you can put them around your neck and wear them necklaces, everything is out there. But to find those really, truly mystical pieces, and let me show you another one here. They're out there. And here's here's one which, let me show you this one real quick because it's got all the awesome flash. But this is a raw piece. And you can see it's not as flash and pizzazz when it's not cut and polished. So most of the time when you find a piece of Labradorite in a crystal shop or wherever, it's going to be cut and polished because they want to sell you on the, you know, the shine, the shimmer. But again, it's worth it. It's just beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. So when you think magic, you think Harry Potter, you're going to Hogwarts magical. That's Labradorite. Labradorite's awesome. And... One of the best things, the, the easiest way I could explain this, let, let me rephrase that. The easiest way I can explain this is Labradorite magical and it, it's going to illuminate you from within. Think of it that way. Now, think about inside of your mind, all the deep, dark recesses, all the stuff hiding in there, all the stuff that you don't even know is there. This is your flashlight. I view Labradorite like a flashlight. Now, here's the way to think about it. Let's pretend you're in your house 
and inside of this house, that's the inside of your mind. If you have a flashlight, you will be able to flip that light on once in a while. And when it flashes briefly, you are going to see something within your mind. What? We don't know. It could be anything. It could be you flashing and seeing something from your past. Um, it could be something that is from a past life. It could be something um, your guides want you to know about. It, it could be it could be anything. And that's what's so cool is you're not going to just flip the light on and see everything and look around and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I could see this and that. Nope. The illumination part, when you view this like a shimmer, think of it like that flashlight clicking on and clicking off. Clicking on, you're only going to see little bits, little pieces of what's inside of your mind kind of hiding. And that's what makes it so mystical, so magical. You might pick up on a childhood memory when you flick that light on real quick inside your mind, and then that light goes out. It's very difficult to keep the light on constantly. But when you sh use this, think of it like that. You're going to have little moments where if you're working with this and you're holding it, you're meditating with it, you're using its energy, it's going to show you little glimpses of all those little hidden dark spots inside of your mind and illuminate them briefly so you can see them and then be able to think about what you just saw and work with that. And it's great for what they call shadow work when you kind of go a little deeper into yourself and try to get to know yourself a little better and figure out uh, some people work on past life, uh, what, you know, remembering things, stuff even from this life hidden, um, stuff from otherworldly type stuff. You never know what you're going to get, but your mind is infinite. So when you flick this light on, who knows what you're going to see? And then you, it's up to you to kind of decipher it. That's the magic of Labradorite. And that's why I personally love it. You never know what you're going to get with it. Um, let me show you another one. This is probably one of the bigger specimens I have. It's a point, probably about a foot tall, I'd say, and another beauty. But you get something like this. And it doesn't have to be a monster point like this either. But if you leave it near your bed, I've had awesome, awesome experiences. I remember I have, it's, I still have it somewhere. It's a Labradorite sphere. And when I first started working with it, I'm going way back. I didn't know what to expect. I don't go into working with crystals and minerals like, reading about them all and trying to figure out what other people say. I go into them with what I come out with. So if I work with something, I base it on my own experience. So I put it near my bed and I, the very first night I had crazy vivid dreams. And the next night I had a lucid dream. The next night after that, I had another lucid dream. And now I'm thinking, this definitely has to do with Labradorite. Now, eventually, I don't know if... It seems like if you work with um, something enough, it kind of infuses your energy body with the energy, and it kind of... It doesn't dampen it, but I guess you could say dampen it. And the lucid dreams kind of stopped, but in the beginning, holy smokes, I was like, what is going on? I'm having crazy vivid dreams, lucid dreams, and it all had to do with Labradorite. And this just illuminates you from within and gives you all types of hidden messages. Just think of this like that flashlight. You're just going to flip that flashlight on inside your mind and see some crazy stuff. Here's another one. This is a monster piece of Labradorite. Look at the flash on this sucker. Woo! Wow. But when I think Labradorite, I think magic. I think psychic abilities. I think crazy lucid dreams. I see, and it just energizes your imagination. It gives you great new ideas, creativity. I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. But you have to think 
think of this like that flashlight, that flicker, where if this is where you don't see anything, everything's pitch dark. Boom! There's your flashlight on. Just that little flicker is enough to show you some cool stuff inside of your mind. Definitely work with Labradorite. It's very easy to work with. Like I was saying, I, I, I just simply sat a sphere next to my bed and had crazy experiences. So I would highly recommend working with this. Highly recommend it. Very easy. Something that you could get right into real quick. And you don't have to like meditate in some crazy yoga pose and, uh, you know, do anything crazy. Just put it next to your bed or sleep, uh, sleep with a palm stone or something. And you should be having experiences right out of the gate. And definitely, I would love to hear about your experiences. So please, I, I mean, I love hearing about all that kind of stuff. It's awesome. Because it definitely affects people differently, but I would love to hear about them in the comments. Um, I just wanted to also thank everybody. Um, I'm getting closer and closer to 1,000 subscribers. Very new channel. I just started this in early March of 2022. So everything is going great. And once I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to start doing giveaways. And I can't wait. I really can't wait. That's going to be so much fun to do a giveaway entry and have some people receive some awesome specimens kind of like this where you're going to get something really awesome for free. Not just little tiny little trinket stuff. I'm going to do some awesome stuff. So hope you had fun watching this video and uh, learned some stuff. And we will see you guys next time. Um, also, real quick, I sell a lot of this stuff in my Etsy shop. Check it out. I have the link in the description and see you guys next time. Alright, today we're going to be talking about Elestial Quartz, otherwise called Skeletal Quartz. And I think you could kind of see why it would be called Skeletal, because in a way it looks like skeleton-like, I guess. <laughs> but um, Elestial Quartz is, this is it here, and it's kind of like a smoky quartz and it's got just layers of all kinds of geometric patterns in it um just grids lines everything you can imagine all this crazy stuff going on in it and i have a bunch of different celestial quartz and of course i can only find two specimens and one of them I have is monstrous. So there's no way I could use that as an example. But this is a good example of it. Elestial Quartz is definitely one of the higher vibrational crystals you can get. Um, and especially in terms of a more readily available crystal where you could get it from a crystal shop or online. Um, skeletal quartz is pretty easy to find. Um, not the cheapest. It is a little pricey, even for smaller specimens, but kind of like you get what you pay for. Um, Elestial quartz, you're definitely going to want some of this in your collection to work with. Um, I would highly recommend it. This is something that should be on your top of your list in terms of working with crystals, Elestial Quartz. I, I try to give you guys a lot of crystals that are easier to work with, but it doesn't matter. We're going to go through every crystal imaginable, every minimal, mineral specimen, everything. So Elestial Quartz is super high vibrational. And 
in terms of a crystal that's going to give you some effects and all, here's the thing. A lot of crystals you work with, let's say you're working with green aventurine, um, carnelian, stuff like that. You're not going to be like a lot of people think you're going to be, you know, take up a crystal and turn into Thanos and be, have this superpowers. And it doesn't exactly work like that. When you work, when you're working with crystals, you're working with more subtle energies, subtle energies take time to work. You're going to have to work with them. You're going to have to spend some time with them and you're going to have to acclimate to them in a way, kind of like you're taking medicine in a way. You're not going to just pop one pill and everything, whether you're treating physical ailments, emotional ailments, whatever the case may be, you're not going to be better overnight. And a lot of times people pick up a crystal and, oh, I don't feel nothing. And of course you're not going to just immediately, you got to work with this stuff. You got to take time. Now, Elestral Quartz, you could kind of fast track and jump ahead a little bit because you are going to feel effects from Elestral Quartz. Now, this is a quartz, so you're going to definitely want to cleanse this. Um, as I talked about in other videos, and I will have other videos about cleansing crystals, activating and charging them. Um, this is something, whenever you see crystals which are clear, and this is a quartz, so obviously it's a clear crystal. You're going to want to definitely release all the, the stuff that's stuck on this. Um, quartz is famous for picking up energies. It could pick up emotions and hold it in there. It could trap a lot of that past energy that other people that have used them. So you're going to want to definitely cleanse your crystals, your court, your electrical quartz before you really delve into using it. And I would charge this as well. And again, I'm going to have videos on all that stuff. It's nothing crazy. It's easy to do. And I'm going to make it simple for you guys. So Elestral Quartz, let's say you get yourself a nice specimen like this. Let me show you one more here. You pick up your nice specimen. Here's another one I have. Another beauty. And you want to work with it. You, you, you want to work with Elestral Quartz. First of all, what is Elestral Quartz going to do for you? Elestral Quartz is a strong crystal. And it's a crystal that's all about the divine. It's all about the universe. It's all about connecting to the universe. It's all about getting, pulling in all that prana, that chi, that universal energy that's fed into your energy body. Even though you don't know it's there, it's always coming in. Coming in and going out. And this will help bring even more of that prana chi whatever you want to call it that universal energy this is going to make your energy body sing in all that energy it's going to just pull it in it's like lightning in a crystal it, it, it's definitely one of the stronger crystals you could use and something that if you work with you will have experiences with it a hundred percent so this is quartz so you can also program quartz that's a whole other topic but if you program an celestial to do a specific thing look out it's like quartz on steroids but again i'm going to just touch upon the crystal itself kind of go over it and a lot of those other deeper things like programming crystals and all that i could do that in separate videos so this, what are we going to use Elestral Quartz for? Now, I've had other videos on um, all different types of stones, but one of them I think I did was Lepidolite. And Lepidolite is a good stone when you're uh, stuck in that rut, you're, you're all that stagnant energy, and you kind of it kind of busts it away from your energy body. Guess what? Here's another one. And this one's even more effective than Lepidolite. Lepidolite's a more gentle um, approach to it. It's a little different. Elestral Quartz is like taking your, uh, oh, how, what, what can I use? It's like using one of those um, Ghostbuster backpack things with the plasma shooter. <laughs> Just 
just blasting off the the uh, the crud away from you. This can definitely break up bl- any type of blocked energy deeper than a lipidolite can get to. This can get deep into the energy body and like a lightning bolt, just blast it away. And the cool part about Elestral Quartz is it brings in that prana, that chi, that universal energy, and it could fill your your chakras, fill your energy body with that divine cosmic energy, which is always there. Whether you believe it or not, it's there. And this will amplify it. It will bring it in. It will help dissolve all that bad stagnant energy. And it will fill all those little gaps and holes and heal all that. Which in turn, when you heal your energy body, you essentially can heal pretty much any illness. Because it's going to soak in and your energy body... First thing, like when you, when you're, you have a type of disease or you have some type of, um, any type of issue, the underlying cause. And again, I have to say like, you know, of course, don't use this, (laughs) take this, like, don't not go to a doctor and just use quartz crystals. But I'm, I'm saying if you work with them enough, you're going to treat the underlying issue by filling in all those holes and gaps and all that damage caused by the actual illness. It could be because your energy body has rips, tears, who, who knows, any type of traumatic events, all that kind of stuff does damage and it could be easily repaired, but you got to use the right tool to repair it. And when you repair your energy body, guess what? your illness goes away, whatever the underlying cause, whatever it is. Elestral quartz is great because it works with everything. It doesn't work with just your crown chakra or your um, third eye chakra or anything like that. It works with every chakra. It works with your entire energy body. From head to toe, everywhere, this crystal will work and infuse you with that powerful universal energy connect you with the universe and one thing i would like to state i wouldn't recommend sleeping with this you will get vivid dreams because what's going to happen is it's gonna it's gonna pull all that universal chi that energy in and a lot of times it it'll saturate those chakras to the point where a lot of that energy has to go somewhere So you might be overstimulated, if anything. You might not be able to sleep. Um, It might keep you up at night. Um, Yes, you might have some experiences with it during uh, the middle of the night or whatever, but I wouldn't recommend sleeping with Elestral Quartz. Um, Just use it as you need it type of thing. But it's a powerful crystal. And it's a great crystal that will get rid of all that stagnation and help repair all that any kind of damage to the energy body and that will in turn trickle down and symptoms of whatever you got going on starts to go away so the other thing that is great about electrical quartz and i want to specify this because i have my own personal story with it using electrical quartz can help you conquer whatever fear you got. Now, most of the time when you're conquering fears in the metaphysical world, it's not like you're taking this into a haunted house and, you know, doing it that way, conquering a fear that way. But here's a good example. When I was growing up, when I was young, I was able to astral project pretty easily. And Once I started figuring out like what is going on, what is happening, and I'm starting to read books and I'm starting to figure out um, what actually is going on. I I didn't know when I was a kid what astral projection was. I'd have these experiences and didn't know what was going on. Nobody can answer questions for me. And I started getting scared. 
And I carried that fear where, man, I don't want to be sucked out of my body and what's going to happen to me. Where am I going to go? And your mind races. This is the crystal that helped me get over all that fear, get over that anxiety by using this and working with this crystal, meditating with it. And even when I applied it to astral projection, lucid dreaming, that type of stuff, it helped me get over that fear, over those hurdles where, oh boy, I'm scared. What's going to happen to me? Where am I going to go? Am I going to go to some dark dimension like in Dr. Strange and be terrified? And, you know, you, it's, it's tough because the fear of the unknown is, it's a pretty scary fear. But Elestral Quartz, highly recommend. It will get you over fears like that. And it's a perfect, perfect crystal to work with. Experience all that energy. It's like a conduit for the universal energy. And when you connect to this, whoo, you'll know it. And you can feel it for sure. So this is something that I use quite a bit. And I would highly recommend getting some Elestral Quartz and working with it on a regular basis. And you will see some pretty cool and pretty awesome uh, differences in whatever you're trying to accomplish. So that's the scoop on Elestral Quartz, also called Skeletal Quartz. And like I said, I have more specimens of this, but I have so much stuff it's scattered all over my house. But the one specimen I would need... I mean, the thing must be a foot and a half tall by uh, a foot wide, something like, I mean, it's massive. I, um, maybe I'll take a picture of it and kind of toss it in with the video segment at the end. And uh, just so you guys can see it, it is a beast of, of a specimen. Super, super heavy. Um, but yeah, let's hear um, any of you guys... Uh, any of your experiences with with Elestral Quartz, I'd love to hear about it um, in the comments and stuff. So that's another one, Elestral Quartz. It's like just power and lightning infused right within Quartz. And it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful.